Hi, my name is Dawn Dickens and I'm the Biodiversity Education Officer at the Manx Wildlife Trust. So today we're actually in the Scarlet Visitor Centre and the main thing around here is the geology of the area. So we're just going to run through a little bit and put you in the picture about why the rocks here are so special. So the earth is 4,600 million years old. That's pretty old. It's actually older than me. But the rocks here are actually from the Carboniferous period, about 350 million years old. So just about here. So you can see that we've got corals and things. This is how we tell how old a rock is, is we look at the fossils in them. You're not going to find any dinosaur skeletons here, unfortunately, because they came along a lot later in the Jurassic period. So this is way, way before it. What's really exciting here is because the whole of the planet Earth is split into plates, these plates move very slowly across the surface of the Earth. And this area here, 350 million years ago, we would have needed scuba diving equipment because we would have been under the water. And because we've also moved across the globe, we were actually about 60 degrees south of the equator at this time. So it was a lot warmer, which would have been quite nice, and um, it was underwater. So what did it look like? Because obviously the seas wouldn't have looked like the seas we have now, here now. So this is a picture of what would have been in those oceans. These very strange long things here are called belemnites, okay? And these white well, things you can see in the background are actually something called sea layers or crinoids. And we've also got some little crustaceans here, little trilobites running around um, the bottom of the ocean. So it would look very, very different. You wouldn't find trilobites now. We don't have belemnites. We do, funny enough, still have sea lilies or crinoids around. So we're going to find out a little bit more about the fossils you can find in the rocks. So I've picked out a few fossils which are very key fossils in this area. And they tell us a lot about this warm ocean. This is what it's telling us um, that we know it is warm and that um, we had species there that we wouldn't see in our waters today. Obviously with evolution they've changed anyway, but these would not be in our waters because it's just too cold. So the first one we're going to have a look at is something called a solitary coral. And I'm just going to show you the fossils first. So when you're looking at them, you can see, I mean, obviously the fossil's made out of rock. You're looking at the very fine um, shape to it. There's a very distinct shape. You can see very fine lines on it. Sometimes it helps if you get some water and just wet the fossil so you can just see. And here you can stop picking up lines that are radiating out and also lines going down the coral. And you can see it's a very circular shape. This is another one that you can see, and this is very distinct horn shape. So it would have been attached at the bottom here. And if you, you just might be able to make out very fine lines on it. And also on the end, you can see that's very circular as well. So these are solitary corals. And if you look, this is what a solitary coral is. It looks, to me, it looks very like an anemone, but it's set within a cup shape. So it has tentacles like a sea anemone, and it has a central mouth like a sea anemone, but it lives in this cup. And when that dies, then the next one builds up. So these solitary corals have been made up over many, many years. So that's what the creature look like many years ago. You can see all the tentacles here and that cup shape. We wouldn't find them in our oceans now, but we do have soft corals around the Isle of Man. So Rigosa solitary corals. The next one we're going to look at is another coral again, but it's a colony coral. Bit of a tongue twister that one. So what that means is those corals are all joined together in a group. Now, when you're looking at fossils, it gets very, it's like doing a big giant 3D um, puzzle because you've got the top and you've also got the side aspect 
of the um, fossils. So you have to be very careful when you're identifying them. But we've got some lovely examples here. So this is looking down on top of the coral. So we're looking at the cups or what we call thecas, where the corals would have lived. It looks very like a honeycomb structure. Absolutely beautiful. Okay. Then you might, that's looking down at the top of them here. I'm just going to try my little wetting the fossil um, ploy again. If you look, you can see like very distinct like branches coming up. Okay. They almost look like a, like some sort of a bush, you can see here as well, okay? So we're now looking at the side of the coral, and you can see that it just looks like a series of lines. We can see the tops just here all joined together. So you can get branching colony corals, and you can get them where they're all joined together. Typically as well, you might well find, I'm sure, a very spotty rock. I'm gonna use my magical trick again, get some water and just wet it and there you should be able to see the spots a lot clearer so this is another um colony coral here and you'll find these sort of stones all around the island you can find them up at the point of the air right the way around to, um, to castle town okay because obviously the sea water breaks them up and moves around the island so looking at a colony coral picture here you can see they're all joined together and they are actually joined this uh, the membranes join over these ridges of the cups so what did they look like well here we've got one of the solitary or free living corals and here you can see they just absolutely beautiful stunning colors so you still find corals today obviously in very warm places but you wouldn't find corals like this around the isle of man The next fossil I'm going to show you is looks very, very similar to a um, coral, but it isn't. It's still another animal. They're called sea lilies or crinoids, and they do look absolutely fantastic. They do look very, very like a plant. So I'm just going to use my trick again of wetting. <coughs> Big splash of water on the floor, just here. And if you can see in this rock here, all on my finger, you can see a very, very straight line, and it seems to be segmented, cut into little bits. Okay, this is the stem of a crinoid. We've got another piece here, a massive piece of rock. I'm going to wipe it again. Here we go, and just hold it up. And you can see now, well, often these creatures get broken up when um, they die, the hard parts get broken up, and you can see it's just like a jumble in the rocks. But this, you can definitely tell, is a crinoid, very straight edges, straight lines across, and very circular cross section cut across this stem here with a central hole in the middle. And you can just see it's absolutely delightful here. Very common fossil here at Scarlet. So what did they look like? Just absolutely stunning animals. And it's very hard to remember this is not a plant, it's an animal because it looks so like a, a palm tree. Just like seaweed, they have a hold fast, they needed to hold onto the ground. They have this columnar stem, okay? An arboreal cup, so that's where the mouth would be for the animal, and arms that come off it as well. So what do they look like? Well, we still get these sort of um, crinoids around in our waters. You can find them in cold waters. They're more common up in Scotland. But look, just absolutely stunning. How lovely is that creature? And the last fossil I'm going to show you is my absolute favourite. Um, I'm going to hold you up these fossils first. Now, if you look very carefully, can you see they're very round shape? It's very distinctive. This one's very crystalline. That means that um, it's been replaced with quartz. So that's why it looks so white. But you can just make out, and if you look, there's a coil, 
very, very like a snail shell. On this one, you can see the same, the coil going around. Okay. And this one is a beauty. Just look at this. You can make out the lines of the shell. So I like to get people to guess how big this animal would have been. And it would have been huge. Can you imagine if this stretched fully round and it's still going on here. So this would have been a huge, great big animal. So you would think, looking at the shell, very, very like a snail. It's not, it's actually something called a gonia type. Um, there you go, there's a better picture of it. Everyone says, oh, ammonite, ammonite. But it's, a, it's not an ammonite, it's not the same sort. These chambers, for a start off, are what we call very simple. The ammonites used to get very um, dendritic or leaf-like um, structures. So what did a goniotite look like? Well, there it is. Just basically like a squid in a shell. And what I love here, can you see that when it retreated back into its shell, it closed the cap on top. If you look carefully, it's got a very simple eye. And down here, this little tube here is where it squirts water out to be able to swim. Now, we don't have them today. The nearest relation we have to these is something called a nautilus. They became extinct basically because they couldn't steer themselves. They weren't very good at directing where they were going. And also when um, fish um, became more abundant in the oceans, this is what they preyed on. So they are now extinct, but what a fantastic looking creature. So I brought you here just to show you um, the two different sorts of rocks that we have at Scarlet. So here on this cliff face, you can see very distinct layers and the whole surface is lovely flat. This is sedimentary rock. It's very, very typical. Um, it's laid down in layers. So this is the limestone that we have. So that sea, you remember we were looking at, we were looking at the fossils that are in it. These are sediments from that sea. But if we carry on and look beyond the layers of rock, you can see right on how this is there, or what appears to be an island. It doesn't have that flat look to it. It's like a jumble on top. Okay, it looks a bit like a crumble mix. That actually, believe it or not, is our volcano. We have a volcano on the Alaman. It is extinct, it's not going to be rough. But that was the core of a volcano. And if we follow the horizon across, you can see that same jumbled mix spreads in a big ridge back. So actually what happened here was there was a big fissure, a big opening, and the magma and the lava flowed out and up over the top. So not only was there just the volcano, but also it broke through the rocks. So this volcano came, um, was created after the sea had been formed. So it's later than the ocean. Then if we carried on, you would see very straight lines. These are called dikes, okay? And they were laid down in the tertiary period. So there's been quite a lot of volcanic act action in the area. What we're going to um, do now is walk further along and go down onto the beach and have a look at these fossils in situ, that's in the rocks in which they occur. So we've come down onto the beach which is just um, down from the car park here and um, already I've found several rather large um, ragosa or solitary corals. So if you can see here, if you follow my finger, this is looking at the side of the fossil and here, the round bit, and I managed to make this one a little bit wet, you can see the circular top or the cup where the animal would have sat. So there's just one there, there's another one just there. And actually, this is what's fantastic about this area. The more you, if you just sit down and look, you'll start seeing more and more and more. There's another one just here. And actually you can see the sides here of the fecus, so, so they're like a little lens shape. So we're just going to have a little look around and see what other fossils we can find. So we've come to another um, piece of rock and here what we're looking at, if you can see I'm just putting my fingers down either side of it, very very straight. These are those crinoid 
fossils just here. There's quite a jumble of them here. Can you remember I said that they'll often break up and you'll see all the different parts? There's actually the end where it's gone across the section of crinoid here. So we've got that very circular bit. So it is confusing because these fossils are all very um, straight looking things, but I'm just going to draw you um, a little diagram to try and help you. So if it's a, a solitary um, coral, what it tends to, I always think of them as more like sausage shaped. They're more irregular on the outside like this. And inside you might see these little lenses. Sometimes they dish down a bit. Okay, and these are the cups where the animals would have lived. So that's looking at the side of the coral. If you looked at the top, we had a cross section across it, you'll see radiating lines out from it, just like this. So this is your solitary coral. However, if you find something with a lot straighter edges and the lines on it are more like segments that just go straight across, this is going to be your crinoid stem. They're very, very straight compared to the um, corals. And the cross section on these tends to be circular with that middle bit missing. So that's what you need to look for. Sometimes when these are broken up as well, you'll see if it, you don't see the straight bits across, you'll actually see if it's worn just slightly further, like a zigzag lines all the way down on one side and the other as well. Okay, so very, very zigzaggy lines, which you would never get in the coral. So bring a picnic, come on down, enjoy Scarlet and come and do some fossil hunting. These fossils are absolutely everywhere. And once you get your eye in, you'll start seeing them all over the place.